Hello, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, version 1, oh wait, point one three point three. Uh, this is the final demo version that you can get for free, um, and I'm going to be doing a three-part tutorial on how to, let's see, on uh, basic parts and what they do, operating your so-called spaceships, if you can get them into space. And also, uh, from my last tutorial, I'm going to do show two ways to get to the Mun, because you're on Kerbin, and it's not the moon, it's the Mun. So, get used to it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's jump in. Alright, so here we are at our uh, space center, Kerbin Space Center. Uh, right now we've only got uh, a vehicle assembly building and the launch pad and um, you can only click on the vehicle assembly building so let's head on in and start assembling some vehicles now I'm gonna hit new because I already have a spaceship open but so this is the first step you choose a command module uh, in this version there's only one uh, later versions they are adding more so Click accept and here we go. We have our command module. Now this is where your astronauts are. So if anything blows up on your ship, this is the one part you do not want to blow up because then the mission is kind of failed. So this is the most important part to have survive. So other than that, we've got some pretty important pieces over here starting with uh, Propulsion. We'll start with the propulsion tab. Here we have the liquid fuel tank, the FL T500 fuel tank. It's a large fuel tank. It holds a lot of fuel, and it only works with these two liquid engines. Now, these two are pretty much the same, except for... Well, they're not the same at all, actually. <laughs> this one, uh, you can see it has a larger cone. This one has a smaller cone. Um, this one produces more thrust and it like eats through fuel faster this one uh, goes through fuel slower but or it has less thrust goes through fuel slower but it is uh, vectorable if that makes sense basically if you try to turn your ship with your controls uh, these will turn uh, on their little pivot point right there and uh, help you help the ship to turn uh, where there's no oxygen such as in space which is where we're headed and uh, the final two we have a RCS fuel tank and uh, I'm gonna get to that later but just remember that you cannot use RCS fuel um, with these fuel uh, or these engines uh, they're not compatible but uh, I'll get to that later and here you have a solid rocket fuel booster now the good thing about solid fuel is they're, they're really powerful the bad thing is if anything is going wrong like they're overheating uh, you can't really eject them because they'll probably just fly off and hit your ship because you can't stop it once you light the fuse it's like a bottle rocket pretty much so that's it for the propulsion uh, command and control. Hmm. We got some good stuff in here. Uh, we have the. Adv uh, I'm gonna start over here actually. We have the SAS module. Now the SAS module, you can see. Um, I wish I could point to it with my mouse, but I can't. Uh, under the description and to the right, it shows it has a max. One unit has a max torque of 10. Now, uh, when you start building bigger and bigger ships, your ships are gonna want to twist on uh, as they're going up they're going to want to twist uncontrollably and you're going to be like how do I stop this and the only way well not the only way but one very good way uh, to stop it is adding an a SAS module and uh, that'll counteract the spinning forces that you're like uh, the drag of the air along the hull of your ship is, do uh, is creating and uh, the engines uh, the twisting motion that the engines are creating. Alright, and next we have the RCS thruster block. Now, if you remember 
the RCS fuel tank. Um, this is what uses that fuel. Now you can think of the RCS fuel tank as a almost like a compressed air tank, and the uh, thruster block is um, four little nozzles. So uh, what this is useful for is when you're in space and you don't have any air to flow over your wings and you want to turn your ship, you turn your RCS on and that uh, allows your thruster blocks to um, start working and you can uh, twist and turn and do all kinds of things with your ship that you couldn't do if you didn't have RCS thruster blocks. And this final thing in uh, the command and control tab is the advanced SAS module. Now this is uh, just a standard SAS module and this only works on your Z axis? Y axis? It only works on one axis and that axis is the spinning axis of the ship. Like it's almost like it's spinning right there in its little animation. That's the only way that it works. So if you activate, if you only have these on your ship and you activate it, it's only going to keep your ship from turning. It's not going to keep it pointed in one direction. Now the advanced SAS module um, takes control. It's basically a um, almost like a flight computer, but you can't input anything in it. The only input you can put input into it is go straight. Go where I when I activate you, go that way. So. Uh, if you have wings or um, RCS thruster blocks or vectorable engines, if you turn on SAS and you have one of these modules, this module will take control of all of your wings, uh, thruster blocks, everything, and it'll keep your ship pointed in the direction that you want it or that you set it to be. All right, moving on, we're going to go to the structural and aerodynamic um, tab. Here we have a uh, fuel line, so say you want to get fuel from one part of your ship to another, that's how you would uh, do that. And uh, these next two are uh, basically the same um, in their function. Uh, we have decouplers. One's a stack decoupler and the other is a radial decoupler. Now the only difference between these two, uh, they both serve very good purposes, but let's see. Um, a stack decoupler works where you can um, you can put it uh, you can attach it to other components of your ship um, in a stackable way so this is very useful when you're making stages so I'll go ahead and uh, put a little ship together here and now you can see down here in the bottom right that we have our command module and uh, if you hover over you can see the uh, if you hover over either one the other one is highlighted uh, so this is highlighting in the stage uh, area down here. And we have our stack decoupler. S and then uh, on our second stage, we have our fuel tank and our engine. Now, what this means is uh, when we're on the launch pad, we'll hit the uh, next stage button. It'll ignite this and burn through the fuel. And then once the fuel's burnt up, we'll hit the next stage button. And the stack decoupler will decouple and then we're left with only our command module and uh, I'll show a little bit later how we can get it safely down so also we have our radial decoupler now and radial decouplers go on the sides of uh, components other components so um, you put it there and you can see it's hanging on the side there and We'll grab a yeah we'll grab a solid rocket booster throw it on there and now we have this and you can see it's been put into the stage list so now we have a solid rocket booster that fires and then it decouples and then the liquid engine goes burns through the fuel then you and then once that's done you release your command pod so staging can get a little confusing especially the bigger the ship you build but um, good staging equals good launch and uh, not no dead astronauts or er, kerbinauts so that's that's always a good thing 
All right, and the last couple of uh, items we have in the um, aerodynamic, structural and aerodynamic tab is the tricoupler. Now, this is going to be useful not so much for smaller rockets, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate on this uh, really tiny rocket. We'll go ahead and get rid of these. Oh, this is a very important uh, note as well. If you want to get rid of a part, you, you put it on there and you don't want it anymore. Drag it over, click in here, and you'll hear a little uh, trash can paper being crumpled up noise. So that means it's been deleted and you're good. Um, so here we got the stack, or just the uh, tricoupler. That is a stack tricoupler, yeah. Um, so what this is useful for is putting a lot of engines on one fuel tank, basically. Uh, you get a lot more thrust, a lot more bang for your buck, but uh, it basically triples the amount of uh, fuel drain uh, out of the attached uh, fuel tank. So, you know, this fuel tank will drain three times as fast. You'll almost go three times as fast. But just be aware that, you know, this drains your fuel really fast. All right, the last couple things we have here are um, really useful for bigger ships, and uh, I'll go over there, uh, you know, how they're used a little bit later. Uh, so, here in the utility and scientific page, um, I don't think there's anything else on these last two, so this is the last thing. We have a parachute! Woohoo! The only thing. Well, the only thing in uh, this version of KSP that can get your command module back to the surface safely. So, we have our little ship here, and if you want to take it out and launch it, oh, we'll name it. Uh, why not, uh, little buddy, whoop, buddy, <laughs> little buddy, save it. Uh, now it shows up in our uh, saved ships. Cancel that. Launch. Skip tutorial. Don't need no stinking tutorial. And check it out. Alright, now that we've covered all the parts, I'll take you through some tips and tricks on how to build your ships faster and uh, make them a lot more symmetrical in design, which is really important when you're building bigger ships. So, my first tip is, if you hold down the ALT key on your keyboard, and you left click, it duplicates that part of your ship, and uh, allows you to place it again. So, again, ALT click, and place. And this also works for every um, subsequential... Uh, I forgot what the word is, but <laughs> basically any part connected to the part that you're copying or duplicating will be copied as well. So this is really helpful when you're building um, really big complicated ships and you work on one side and you realize, uh, now I have to do this again, well all you have to do is copy and paste pretty much. So that makes building bigger ships a lot easier. And now the next part let's go ahead and throw an engine on here and now you might be saying to yourself so if I want to put one rocket on a radial or yeah radial decoupler I'm gonna have to copy paste it and try to get it in the same the same height all the way around no you actually don't and I will show you a handy trip trip trick uh, built into the game it's up here and it's called symmetry check it out so you can click this you can click through it uh, and then go back to your ship which that's a lot of rockets whoa um, you can do that um, the easier way is to learn the keyboard shark shortcut which is X uh, so you cycle through all of your options here and it puts them all uh, on the opposite sides or the symmetrical sides to where you have placed the first one so for this one uh, let's why not we'll just go ahead and put eight rockets on there if we can if you click and it doesn't go that means that there are parts colliding with each other so you 
you're gonna have to take your symmetry down a little bit. We'll have to go with six this time. Sad day, but it's for the good of science. All right, now that I've taught you all my tricks, um, I'll show you a little bit about staging uh, over here in your stage list. Um, so now we have six solid rocket boosters attached to our liquid rocket. Let's say um, we want to get max thrust from all our engines like as soon as we launch. So what we are going to want to do is we're going to take one of um, add this rocket to the same stage that these are on so that they both fire at the same time. So what we're going to do is ho hover over this and look in our stage list and find it. So it's in stage two, uh, click and drag, and now it's added to stage four. You don't have to um, drag, you don't have to move your fuel tanks with your engines. Um, I usually keep all the fuel in the same stage because it can get really confusing and you can have lots of stages. So I just kind of try to keep them all together. Um, the last thing I want to show you, uh, <laughs> this has been a big help to me because I make mistakes a lot. Say you're looking at stuff and uh, you know you're trying to get to this one part and you like take all your rockets off your ship and you've like removed an entire section stages and stages of your ship and you like delete it for some reason. Um, it's as easy to bring back as Control Z. Bada bing, bada boom. There, it's right in the stage list. Everything is as it should be. All right, well, that's about it for the vehicle assembly building. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll take this bad boy out to the launch pad, and uh, I'll teach you about flying and operating a ship.